All right, guys, so in this section, we're learning how to solve absolute value equations. So O3 part one has two parts. The first part, we're solving equations with radicals. The second part, we're solving absolute value equations. So that's where we're picking up now. So first of all, we need to remember what is an absolute value, right? Um, so an absolute value is the distance from zero. So if I have a number line, uh, and I want to know the absolute value. That means the absolute distance from a certain number. Um, I might say something like the absolute value of x equals 5. Okay. What that means is, is that the distance from x is 5. Okay. Um, so if I have 0 here, right? The distance from five can go either direction, or the distant five distant from zero can go either direction. One, two, three, four, five this way, right? So the distance between zero and five is five, or it can go five the other way. One, two, three, four, five, so it's negative four, negative five. So the position is negative five, but the absolute value is five because it's just the distance from zero. So because it's the distance from zero, um, it doesn't matter which direction. So when I say absolute value of x equals five, what, what we're really looking at here is what values of x, um, when I take the absolute value of them are five. So the answers would be positive five and negative five. Okay, those are the two positions that are five units away from zero. Uh, so the solutions would be five and negative five but the absolute, because the absolute value of each of those is positive five, right? So let's go ahead and think about what happens if I were to, for example, say x plus three, um, the absolute value of x plus three equals five, right? Oops, I'm gonna put zero here. So in this case, x is the number that we're wanting to know the distance of, but we're adding three to it. Um, so because of that, I need to think of what value when I add three to, three to it gives me a distance of five. So that would be two, right? Because if I add three more to that, that's five away. Um, the other one that would work, what other number is five away right here, right? Um, when you add 3 to it, would be uh, negative 8. So if I take negative 8, which is right here, and I add 3 to it, that's going to put me 5 away from x. Okay. So the solutions here would be negative 8 and 2. So the way that I need to set these up, these are each going to have two answers. Um, because we're going to have the negative answer that if I add or subtract or multiply x by it, it's going to get me within this number of zero. Um, and I also have the positive number that if I add or subtract, I mean, won't, they won't always be positive and negative, but they'll always be um, just like two values that if I either add or subtract or multiply, I'll get that distance away from the origin. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening. When we do this, now let's talk about how to just solve the equations. So we're going to go ahead and look at some examples. So here I have that a, the absolute value of a minus 7 equals 1. Um, so in order to solve this, because um, I know that there are going to be two solutions, one on the right of 0 and one on the left of 0, um, I am going to go ahead, and the part that's in the absolute value I'm going to drop the absolute value, and I'm just going to write an equation that looks exactly the same without the absolute value. So this is going to be one of the solutions. The other one is going to be the, the same equation on the left, but it's going to equal the negative of this number, right? If the stuff in here is equal to negative 1, then when I take the absolute value of it, the negative will go away and I will get 1. So I have to look at the positive and the negative solution. So I'm going to go ahead and solve each one separately to get my two solutions. So on this one, I'm adding 7 to both sides. So 1 plus 7 is 8, so that's one of the solutions. 
On this one, I also add 7 to both sides, but now I have negative 1 plus 7, so my solution is 6. So let's go ahead and try another one. Let's try one that's a little different. Okay, so I have 3 times x inside my absolute value equals 6. Again, just take the equation just as it is and just drop the absolute values for one of them. For the other one, we want to know um, which what would equal negative 6, right? Because on my number line, I have positive 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have negative 6. This is the distance I want to be away, right? Because it says 6 right here. But I could have positive 6 or negative 6 away from x. So I've got to look at both. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Okay? So that's just saying if I take a number, negative 2, and I times it by 3, that's going to give me negative 6. So that value is 6 away from the origin. Or if I take positive 2 and times it by 3, that's going to give me positive 6, and now that's 6 away from the origin. Okay? So that's what what's happening here. So let's go ahead and look at another one. So on this one I have r plus 8 divided by 5 equals 4. Now everything is divided by 5. Okay. Um, in order to break this into two different equations, I need to first get the absolute value part, so this part of the equation, all by itself on one side. So if there's anything outside of the absolute value bars, I need to move it to the other side of the equation before I can turn it into little, two little equations that need to be solved. So right now this is divided by 5, so I'm going to times both sides by 5 so that those will cancel. That gives me r plus 8 equals 20. No, it doesn't. It gives me the absolute value of r plus 8 equals 20. Now that the absolute value is by itself, now I can go ahead and write one equation that's just the same without the absolute value bars, and now write another one that has the same answer but just negative of that, right? So I would subtract 8 from both sides, r equals 12, and if I subtract 8 from negative 20, r is negative 28, okay? So they should have two solutions when you're doing absolute value. Um, so on this one, go ahead and pause the video if you want and give it a try and then come back and watch and see if you can get it. Um, this negative 3 is outside of my absolute value bar, so I need to get rid of that. I need to get it over to the other side. This negative 3 is multiplied by the absolute value of 10n. And I can tell because there's nothing between negative 3 and the bar. So to get rid of it, I'm going to have to undo multiplication So by dividing. So I'm going to get the absolute value of 10n equals 40. Now that the absolute value is by, by itself, I can go ahead and make two separate equations and negative 40 and then go ahead and just solve for n. So n equals 4 and n equals negative 4. Okay. Let's go ahead and try another one. We're just going to keep doing examples. It's a good idea to look at the example, pause the video, give it a try, see if you got it right. So because I need this by itself on one side, I'm subtracting 5 from both sides. So that gives me absolute value of negative 2 oops, plus p equals 6. Now that the absolute value is by itself, I can rewrite this as two different equations, one with a positive 6 and one with a negative 6. Add 2 to both sides here, p equals 8, add 2 to negative 6, and you get negative 4. Okay. So we just have to, on these you have to remember, you've got to solve the positive and the negative because if what is in the absolute value comes out to a negative number, it's still going to equal this number over here once I apply the absolute value and take that negative back away. Okay, on this one I have my absolute value that I need to get by itself, right? So I have two things happening. And it's, we have 8 being added and 6 being multiplied. Remember, always undo pluses and minuses first. So 6 times absolute value of six plus x plus 10 equals 90. 
Now I need to get rid of times 6, so I'm going to divide by 6. So that one cancels with that one. So absolute value of x plus 10 equals 6 goes into 90 15 times. Yeah, that's right. And oops, that was absolute value. So now that I have the absolute value by itself, now I can divide it into two problems, one equaling positive 15 and one equaling negative 15. So I'll go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. x is 5. And if I do negative 15 minus 10, x is negative 25. Okay, let's just do one more example for good measure. Again, it's a really good idea to try it on your own first. Um, we need to get k minus 3 by itself here, so we're going to add 6 to both sides. So 7 times absolute value k minus 3 equals 7. Divide by 7. Absolute value of k minus 3 equals 1. Now that the absolute value is by itself, I can break it into two problems, one being positive 1 and one negative 1. Add 3 to 1 and you get 4. And add 3 to negative 1 and you get k equals 2. Alright guys, let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.